Et c'est fini! Euh. Miaou? Ah! Ah! Oh, come on. Okay, pal, I want answers. Basically, it looks like I'm gonna have to save your planet. Hello, my name is Max G, and this is a video essay on how to make a good Sonic the Hedgehog movie, with a shorter addendum essay on why you should date me. There's been a lot of discussion lately regarding a Sonic movie, and I do believe that there are a lot of conclusions that we can glean from all this. I wouldn't normally have thought that this was necessary, but the first thing that we need is a clear and unified understanding of what a tune is. Some cartoon characters are very obviously animals, or sometimes even fictional animals. Then you have cartoon characters that are meant to represent normal humans. But we also have a third category of characters, who, while they may technically be human, or they may technically be animals, can't really be classified as either, because their anatomy is just too divergent. These are tunes, and while cartoon animals and cartoon people can transition into realism relatively seamlessly, tunes, on the other hand, <laughs> Do not. While there will always be a few fringe weirdo perverts who actually like this stuff, the consensus amongst us sane people is that these ungodly human tune homunculi are creepy, unsettling, and weird. This phenomenon is known as the Toon Canny Valley, and we can see the principle illustrated here in this graph. Sonic's original design was inspired by Mickey Mouse and Felix the Cat, so it's hard to deny that this guy is very clearly a toon. He's got white gloves for crying out loud. They only give those to toons. I mean, we're talking about a guy who looks like this. <laughs> Now you might think that Sonic is cool, or that he's edgy, or that he's extreme and radical. Well, I'm sorry you had to find out this way, but Sonic is just a cartoon. And as we all know, cartoons can never be cool, because they are for babies. And while making a live action Sonic the Hedgehog movie isn't ideal, if you absolutely have to, luckily there is a way for humans and toons to interact believably. But it's less about getting them to appear as if they can exist with cohesion, and more about playing up the natural contrast between them. And since an obvious aversion to cartooniness is what got us this, well, it begs the question. What would this movie feel like if Sonic was absolutely as cartoony as possible? Look at this! I took nine million steps today. There are a few benefits to animating Sonic this way. First of all, Sonic has always looked better as a 2D hand-drawn cartoon. This is because not unlike Mickey Mouse's ears, his spikes can be shown extending off of his head regardless of the angle that we're seeing him from. This allows him to always retain his iconic spiky-headed silhouette. When you render Sonic in 3D, his spikes kind of look like cancerous tumors when we see him from the front. It'll also give the movie a wider appeal because Sonic will be appearing in what's arguably his most recognizable form. Kids are gonna want to go see the new Sonic movie regardless of what he looks like. But older audiences are more discerning. The first Sonic game came out in 1991, so there are people who are familiar with Sonic that are in their 30s and 40s. These are known as 90s kids, and their patronage specifically should be the target demographic of a Sonic movie, because in the eyes of many, Sonic is a 90s character. I mean, if you were 12 when Sonic first hit the Genesis, you're 40 now. I'm sorry to have to bring that up. A movie about a human interacting with a toon version of Sonic would lend itself well to nostalgia because this was a popular aesthetic during that era. And they don't really make movies like this anymore, so it would stand out well against its current competition. While we're at it, let's give this whole movie a 90s aesthetic. You know, like this kind of crap. Heck, we can even have the movie take place in the 90s and give it a 90s soundtrack. Think, people. Think of the merchandising. Basically, we're not adapting Sonic the video game character, we're adapting Sonic the mascot. Sonic the Happy Meal toy. Sonic the Thanksgiving Day Parade balloon. Sonic the Franco-American Spaghetti Noodle. And of course, let's not forget Sonic's immortal catchphrase that we all remember because of how timeless it is. Up, over, and gone. <laughs> That's what it was. Another reason to make the movie this way, uh, it'll make me happy. And of course, my happiness is something that everybody should keep in mind at all times. 
Also, they got his arms wrong. As all good, God-fearing, butter-side-up church people know, Sonic's arms need to be tanned so that they'll contrast with his body, making their position sharply pronounced so his overall pose is more easily readable. If you disagree with me on this, please send me a DM, and I will buy you a plane ticket to my home so I can beat you up for a while. It's the only way that you'll learn that your actions have consequences. Now, I do think it'll help to win over fans if we have the film include at least one more Sonic franchise character. And there are a lot of characters in this franchise, so we have a big pool to choose from. If you're unfamiliar with Sonic characters, here's a quick rundown. Uh, they're all stupid? That's all. Many might think that the best choice would be Tails because he's been around the longest. But personally, I think the better option would have to be Rouge the Bat. Not many people know this, but Rouge actually has a very complex and multi-layered personality. She's also really smart and really funny. It's hard to precisely articulate what it is about her that's so intriguing, but suffice to say, I think it would greatly benefit this project as a whole to have her lend her assets to the film. Lastly, I do want to note something. I'm obviously very critical of the Sonic trailer as it exists right now, but there is one element of this trailer that has elicited a positive response from a lot of people. And in the interest of fairness, I do feel like I would be remiss to end this video without giving it its due acknowledgement. I'm talking about that gangsters paradise, baby! We've been spending most our lives living in robot pigs paradise. Well, those are my ideas. So, uh, you know, get to work, Hollywood. Now that we're done with that garbage, let's move on to my addendum essay of why you should date me. This addendum is intended for hot babes, so if you're not a hot babe, you can feel free to stop watching this video now. Now, you might not have considered me a viable romantic option up until this point, but I'd like to run down a few reasons why you should. First of all, I'm very good at animating Sonic, which I feel I've demonstrated. And you know, you can't even predict all of the ways that that's going to be advantageous in a relationship. So inevitably, when you find yourself in a situation where you need a boyfriend who's good at animating Sonic, you'll be prepared. And before you say anything, I know a thing or two about Sonic, don't you worry. I mean, I'm not just some idiot who doesn't know anything about Sonic. <laughs> uh, I made this video instead of looking for a job this month. So, you know, obviously my priorities are in order. And lastly, I am very family oriented. And by family, I of course mean the Manson family. Now you may have heard that Sonic fans are, putting it sensitively, bat guano kooky? And their gross social ineptitude and oblivious delusions make them simply incapable of maintaining any kind of relationship with anybody. But this is just an ignorant stereotype. And it's one we've had to deal with for far too long, unfortunately. Sonic fans are actually one of the most marginalized groups in our society. And if I could briefly speak on behalf of them, we don't need you to understand our love for this obnoxious, wisecracking blue hedgehog and his mostly terrible games. We simply ask to be treated with the respect and dignity that we deserve. And if you don't, I did buy this spell book recently. So, yeah, you don't want to mess with me. If you'd like to download some of the raw source files that made this video, I'd like to invite you to pledge $5 or more on my Patreon. Uh, this 3D model might not look like much, but I used it to block out Sonic's basic form and then brought the rendered frames into Adobe Animate and drew on top of them. By using 3D renders as construction shapes, I was able to keep him more consistently on model as well as make his movements more precise. Uh, for five bucks, you can look through the files yourself and see what I mean. I also conducted an interview with the real Sonic recently so I could ask him about his movie. So you can click here to check that out. I'd like to thank you guys for watching today. That was really nice of you. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss my next video. Uh, and in the comments, why don't you tell me what your top 10 favorite things about Rouge the Bat are? I'd really like to know that. Well, I've got to go get my spaghetti off the stove, so take it easy, kids. 